steps made, but more work to do. That's the message U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo gave to the press after his meeting with senior North Korean official Kim Jong-chul on Thursday. That suggests there's still no agreement yet between North Korea and the U.S. on a denuclearization deal. But with less than two weeks to go until the Trump-Kim summit, time is ticking. Perhaps a personal letter from Kim Jong-un that is being hand-delivered to Donald Trump by Kim Young-chul later on Friday will go some way to bring the two sides closer. We'll discuss this and more with an expert in the studio later. But first, let's catch up with the latest news updates by turning to our news center with Devin Whiting. Devin. Hi, Jango. More on New York in just a second. But today at the inter-Korean border village of Panmunjom, South and North Korea held their first high-level talk since April's historic summit. The two sides had a lot to hammer out. It was expected they would mainly be talking about how to follow through on the commitments made in the Panmunjom declaration. Let's go to our <coughs> unification ministry correspondent, Oh Jung-hee, who has been following today's high-level talks and joins us live from Seoul's Office for Inter-Korean Dialogue. So Jung-hee, what's the latest? Good afternoon, Devin. We're hearing that the high-level delegations of the two Koreas are working to finalize uh, a, a joint press statement at the Truth Village of Panmunjom. Uh, details of today's press statement are expected to be released very soon as the two Koreas wrap up their uh, uh, today's inter-Korean talks. Uh, today's high-level talks took place at the Peace House located on the South Korean side of the border village of Panmunjom. Uh, Seoul had a five-member delegation led by Unification Minister Cho myung gyun and Pyongyang too had a five-member delegation led by Lee sun gwan the head of the North's Inter-Korean Affairs Committee. South and North Korea's vice ministers of transport and railways, as well as those in charge of sports, attended today's talks. Delegations saw eye to eye in that the April 27th summit agreement has to be carried out quickly and systematically. All right, and though we don't have the press release yet, I believe we have a rough idea of what, they, what were some of the key talking points between the two Koreas. Uh, tell us what's been discussed there. Sure thing. The very first agenda Seoul and Pyongyang touched upon was establishing a joint liaison office in Kaesong, um, in Kaesong, where officials from both Koreas will be stationed. As South Korea suggested that it be installed within the inter-Korean Kaesong industrial complex, which has been shut down for over two years. And the North said that the two Koreas will have to work on renovation together to open the office there as soon as possible. And the two Koreas are certain that they will hold a joint event on June June 15th, that to celebrate 18 years of issuing the first inter-Korean joint statement in 2000. Pyongyang has proposed that the event be held in South Korea. Plus, South and North Korea were eager to set the dates for a string of inter-Korean talks. Those are military talks for lowering tensions, Red Cross talks for holding reunions of war-torn families, and sports talks for forming unified teams for 2018 Asian Games. A Seoul also expressed that it's willing to proceed with forestation projects in North Korea and begin joint investigations for connecting the railways between the two Koreas. That's all I have for now, but I'll have more updates about the joint press statement itself for our later news. Devin. All right, thank you for that. Oh Jung Hee reporting from Seoul's Office for Inter Korean Dialogue. Now, the talks in New York between North Korea's Kim Jong chul and America's top diplomat Mike Pompeo concluded some hours ago. With Pompeo speaking to reporters afterwards, he said he's confident the teams from both sides preparing for the Kim Jong un Donald Trump summit are going in the right direction. He also announced that Kim Jong un's right hand man will himself be meeting with President Trump soon. Our foreign ministry correspondent, E.G. Wan, has more. The two-day meeting between the vice chairman of North Korea's ruling Workers' Party Central Committee, Kim young chul and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in New York City came to an end on Thursday. After a working dinner the day before, the two began their official high-level talks Thursday morning. And at a press briefing in the afternoon, Pompeo said much progress was made not only in his third round of talks with Kim, but also in meetings at the other venues, namely Singapore and Panmunjom. But he also said there remains a great deal of work to do, including convincing the North that in fact its security is safer without nuclear weapons. 
Pompeo also reiterated how he made clear to the regime numerous times that his, President Trump's, and the United States' objective is the complete, verifiable, and irreversible denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. He added that North Korea is also clearly aware of the brighter path Washington is ready to help Pyongyang take should it denuclearize. And Secretary Pompeo said he has faith in the North Korean leader. It will take bold leadership from Chairman Kim Jong-un if we are able to seize this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to change the course for the world. President Trump and I believe Chairman Kim is the kind of leader who can make those kinds of decisions. Meanwhile, Pompeo announced that Kim will be heading to Washington to deliver Trump a personal letter from the North Korean leader. Kim Young-cho's visit to New York was made possible by a waiver he was granted, since he's been the target of U.S. sanctions since 2010 for his role in Pyongyang's nuclear development and other illicit activities. Getting a waiver to New York is relatively easy, since the North has a mission there to the United Nations. But according to State Department spokesperson Heather Noart, he'll need another one to go to Washington. Meanwhile, the U.S. president says he's expecting the official on Friday and that he's looking forward to seeing what's in the letter, which he believes will be very positive. But Trump is still tempering expectations that the summit will be fruitful and even that it'll happen at all. I want it to be meaningful. It doesn't mean it gets all done at one meeting. Maybe you have to have a second or a third, and maybe we'll have none. But it's in good hands. Despite Trump's careful words, there is a great deal of optimism about the possible North Korea-U.S. summit raised by the first visit to Washington by a senior North Korean official in 18 years. Lee Ji-won, Arirang News. And Friday morning, Korea time, not long after he'd spoken to the press, Secretary Pompeo spoke on the phone with his South Korean counterpart, Kang kyung hwa According to South Korea's foreign ministry, they talked for about 25 minutes. Pompeo shared with Kang the results and details of the recent preparatory talks between Pyongyang and Washington held in various places, including the border village of Panmunjom. Pompeo also told Kang about what the U.S. plans to do in the future. The two once again reaffirmed the close cooperation between Seoul and Washington and promised to continue dialogue to bring about the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and permanent peace in the region. North Korea is also in close contact with Russia about what's been happening. Moscow's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov just yesterday met with Kim Jong-un in Pyongyang. The North state media have now reported on those talks and announced that the two sides have agreed to hold a summit meeting of their leaders sometime this year. Ha Ki-jun has the latest. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un says his will for denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula remains unchanged, consistent and fixed. According to the North state-run Korea Central News Agency Friday, Kim made the remarks during his rare meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Thursday. Expressing hope for North Korea-U.S. relations and a resolution to the nuclear issue on the peninsula, Kim said denuclearization must be solved step by step and that it must be achieved through effective and constructive negotiations. Russia supported North Korea's commitment to nuclear disarmament and wished for success. KCNA also reported that North Korea and Russia agreed to hold a bilateral summit this year to boost ties and commemorate their 70 years of diplomatic relations. The Russian diplomats also delivered a letter from Russian President Vladimir Putin to Kim Jong-un. The details of the letter were not revealed, but it's likely to have included a message related to the proposed summit between Kim and Putin. The decision to hold that summit made just two weeks before the landmark summit between North Korea and the U.S. is seen as a move to keep Russia relevant in the flurry of diplomatic activities surrounding North Korea. Park Ki-jun, Arirang News. China is also talking about the flurry of diplomacy between North Korea and the U.S. Regarding the pre-summit talks in New York, China's foreign ministry said today it supports efforts by both sides to demonstrate goodwill and engage in positive interactions. Here's the Chinese ministry's spokesperson. We think it's necessary to attach importance to and solve North Korea's reasonable security concerns while pushing forward denuclearization, which should be realized along with establishment of a long-term effective peace mechanism for the peninsula. 
She added that China, as a major party with an interest in Korean Peninsula issues and as a signatory to the Korean War Armistice Agreement, will continue to do its part to bring all sides to the table. And against that backdrop, Asia's largest annual security forum, the Asia Security Summit, is set to begin Friday evening in Singapore. The three-day Shangri-La Dialogue brings together defense ministers, key officials and security experts from some 50 countries. South Korea's defense minister, Song Young moo is attending and will hold several bilateral and trilateral meetings on the sidelines, including with his U.S. counterpart, James Mattis, on Saturday. The South Korean defense minister will also brief the forum on the recent developments in inter-Korean relations in a speech on Saturday and call for international cooperation for the North's successful denuclearization. I'm Devin Whiting and those are your news headlines for this hour. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo met with the North Korean senior official Kim Young-chul in New York on Thursday. But despite this high-level meeting, it still seems unclear how close or far the two sides are in reaching a denuclearization deal. Let's now take a look at what Pompeo had to say in his press briefing after the two officials met. Today, Vice Chairman Kim and I discussed how our countries could come together and take advantage of the unique opportunity that our two leaders have created through their visions of the future that they have so clearly articulated. In my conversations with Chairman Kim Jong-un in Pyongyang and today with Vice Chairman Kim Young-chol, I have been very clear that President Trump and the United States objective is very consistent and well known. The complete, verifiable and irreversible denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. President Trump has also made it clear that if Kim Jong-un denuclearizes, there is a brighter path for North Korea. We envision a strong, connected, and secure, prosperous North Korea that maintains its cultural heritage, but is integrated into the community of nations. This is a difficult, difficult challenge. Uh, make no mistake about it, there remains a great deal of work to do. And uh, we made progress here, as well as uh, at the same time made progress in the other venues the conversations were taking place. Now to discuss the meeting between Kim Young chul and Mike Pompeo, as well as some of the other uh, developments today, we have with us Professor Shin sang yeop from Kyung University. Professor Shin, thank you for joining us. We're pleased to be here. So Mike Pompeo has now met with Kim Young chul over two days, and, lo and although he said progress has been made, there still remains a great deal of work to do. Mm -hmm. What do you make of Mike Pompeo's statement? Well, first of all, I want to empathize the, uh, the meeting between uh, Secretary Pompeo and the, uh, uh, the Vice Chairman Kim Young-chul of North Korea. That was the highest working level meeting. So at the meeting, they discussed uh, many things, uh, and then they seemed to reach an agreement about many issues. But according to the protocol, you know, the, uh, all details will be uh, are the discussed and published by the two leaders of the uh, government, the USA and the North, Korean, uh, North Korea. What I mean is that they discussed and they uh, uh, made the agreement about the uh, many issues, but they do not uh, the, uh, explain all of them to the public, to the press, before the summit meeting. And then at the summit meeting, two leaders, I mean President Trump and the uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un discuss, and then maybe if they reach an agreement, they will uh, announce all the achievement agreement which they made at the uh, after the summit meeting. But one thing, and and I want to emphasize is that you know, uh, even though they agreed, I mean the Mr. Pompeo and then the uh, Kim Jong Kim Young Chul, they made a progress in the negotiation, but there must be some some many things to be remain to be discussed further, such as mm -hmm. that. As we know very well, North, the USA government has emphasized the North Korean denuclearization issue should be resolved, solved, in uh, all in one way. Uh, but the North Korean government has emphasized that this issue should be uh, solved uh, step by step. So there must be some big differences in a way to uh, solve this North Korean de I mean, nuclear crisis. And then another one is that, you know, the USA was reported to discuss about the, uh, the uh, eradication of the uh, biochemical uh, weapons, but North Korea was against this idea. Maybe, uh, maybe the, uh, the, uh, they should discuss those kind of things continuously 
to uh, uh, finalize their negotiation um, between two countries, I think. Sure. If you look at the body <coughs> language of Pompeo mm. in that statement, it wasn't particularly confident or mm. it didn't seem like he seemed a little bit frustrated almost. Mm. And he did reiterate in that comment that the U.S. demanded uh, complete, verifiable, irreversible denuclearization, mm. CVID as we know it. But he also added, we envision a strong, connected and secure, prosperous North Korea that maintains its cultural heritage, but is integrated into the community of nations. Mm -hmm. Does this also suggest that North Korea has demanded some sort of what they've called CVIG, mm -hmm. complete irreversible guarantee, guarantee of the regime's yes. survival? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, there must be some give and take some between, at the negotiation between USA and North Korea. Well, if North Korea uh, gave up their nuclear programs, including ICBM program, well, they do expect uh, something from USA. Well, at the, uh, uh, immediately they want to uh, uh, stop the uh, economic sanctions against the uh, North Korea because USA, I mean, North Korean economy has been in a bad shape because of economic sanctions, uh, which was initiated by the United States and United Nations. So, uh, uh, if they reach an agreement at the negotiation, definitely uh, USA, I mean, the North Korea ask USA to stop economic sanctions against North Korea, and eventually uh, that the uh, USA government will. Uh, give the CV, uh, 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 the IEG, mm. you know, I mean, and guarantee the, uh, or the regime uh, the itself in North Korea and the or economic prosperity. And also they will give a chance to North Korea to be a country of the global community. Mm. So that those kind of things can be a kind of the rewards which USA can secure, I mean, assure to North Korea for their uh, the, uh, giving up their nuclear programs. Pompeo also revealed that uh, Kim Young-chol was on his way to Washington mm -hmm. to deliver the message, uh, a letter from Kim Jong-un mm -hmm. to Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. What do you think is in that letter? Well, definitely uh, uh, the latter, maybe uh, the, uh, the, uh, the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un will give his idea in, his, in this letter. You know, as we discussed already uh, uh, at the uh, Singapore, there was a meeting at Panmunjom. Uh, they discussed about the, uh, the details about the issues which will be on the agenda of the negotiations and at the summit meeting. And uh, Mr. Pompeo had the, also the uh, negotiation, I mean, talk with the uh, Kim Young chul So uh, certainly uh, over the last 72 hours, they made a huge pro real progress and huge mm. progress at the negotiations. So, uh, and the, uh, as I already explained before, including all those, uh, I mean, discussions um, made by the uh, two countries, the Kim Jong-un will give a final thought about these issues uh, to the President Trump in this letter. So, uh, if the letter uh, tells uh, the USA President that he is agree with the uh, USA about the uh, big issues which was raised by the, uh, uh, the, uh, the negotiations um, in Singapore, Panmunjom, and the New York. Mm. And then next one is that uh, what, what kind of response Mr. Trump will uh, give to North Korea. If North Korea uh, gave the, uh, the uh, similar opinions to uh, USA, what Mr. Trump expected, then Mr. Trump uh, would the, uh, I mean, take the uh, ideas, I mean, proposals from North Korea then there must be some big progress uh, uh, could be made at the summit meeting. Then that will be a turning point, not only in the relations between USA and North Korea, but also in the uh, uh, peace, uh, global peace, I think. So for now, you do think the US-North Korea summit will happen on June 12th as scheduled? I, I think so, I think so. I mean, considering all uh, the progress made by the uh, USA and North Korea, there must be uh, uh, the summit meeting uh, June uh, 12th. Of course, several days before Mr. Trump said that the, the, the meeting could take place uh, the July 12th. <laughs> but I think this is a part of the game, I mean, mm. negotiation with North Korea. So there must be a high possibility that we will be able to see the summit meeting between USA and North Korea on July 12th. Trump has also suggested that he may need to meet Kim uh, many more times, mm -hmm. not just this once. Mm -hmm. And with that, there's some suggestion that he could also be looking to pursue a deal that uh, a deal towards de um, to a declaration of officially ending the Korean mm -hmm. War and mm -hmm. perhaps make an inter-Korean peace treaty as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that could be on the cards? 
I do open the possibility, uh, but the, you know, uh, still uh, we have to wait and see because depending on the uh, summit meeting between USA and North Korea, uh, we should think about the possibility of the, uh, um, I mean, those kind of things. What I mean is that, you know, if both the leaders agreed on the many things uh, which were discussed by the uh, two countries, so if they make a big progress in the negotiation uh, on the, between two countries, then maybe we can think about the possibility of the signing the peace treaty and the, uh, our, our some declaring the end of the Korean War officially. But uh, uh, there, there are some, some concerns raised by the uh, American experts. That means that if they sign a peace treaty, uh, that means that the USA will lose one of the very uh, efficient tools uh, which can be available at the negotiation with North Korea, that is the military option. Uh, as we remember that the USA government has emphasized that every option is on the table, that means including the military options. Mm -hmm. But if they sign a peace treaty on the, uh, um, and among, I mean, with the participation of Korea, that means that USA will use, will not use the military option anymore mm. uh, for the negotiation with the United States. So uh, this means that there are pros and cons about the, uh, I mean, these kind of events. Uh, but we have to wait and see. And as I said before, but depending on the outcomes at the summit meeting between USA and the North Korea, uh, I, can, I, I, I can say that there must be some high possibility of seeing the uh, peace treaty signed by the USA, Korea, and North Korea. Moving on to developments that are happening here mm -hmm. on the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. Today, the inter-Korean uh, high-level talks took place in Panmunjom right. today mm -hmm. after it was cancelled uh, uh, abruptly last time. Mm -hmm. There's some results starting to come out, but uh, what do you think can be achieved from these talks here in Korea? Well, it was reported that the, uh, they will discuss about how to uh, step up their economic cooperations. Mm. Well, they will discuss about uh, reconnecting the railroad between North Korea and South Korea and uh, rebuild the role, I mean, roles in mm. North Korea. Mm. And eventually they want to uh, the, the, uh, establish the, I mean, build the railroads mm. connecting the Europe, trans transpassing the Siberia, mm. you know. This, this could be a very uh, big project and which can give the uh, very positive effects on, not only on North Korean economy, but also the South Korean economy as well. Mm. And also they will discuss about the, uh, reunion of the separate families and then the uh, participating in the Asian Games mm. which is scheduled to be held in August and mm. then the uh, all those kind of things, things we will be uh, on the uh, uh, table for the uh, the meeting uh, today mm. and then uh, but one thing is really concerned about right now is that there are two very sensitive issues mm. And that is about the return of the uh, North Korean restaurant workers. Mm. I mean, North Korean uh, Red Cross, and, and they have uh, empathized that uh, those Korean uh, restaurant workers who got the political asylum mm. uh, last year, they said that that is the, they're against their will, so mm. they should be returned. Mm. But I think this is very sensitive issue. and. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, can uh, that be resolved for the for the separated family reunions to happen? Uh, uh, North Korea seems to have tied the two together. Yeah, but that's the tactic. But the uh, on the part of South Korean government, we cannot take it. I mean, um, mm. it's going to be a big, big problem if um, the South Korean government to take the, those kind of the ask, demands from North Korea. Mm. So uh, at the moment, I think the uh, U.S. and North Co South Korean government will explain the situation as much as we can to North Korea. And another issue, which is very, which is also very sensitive, is that about the joint military drill uh, mm. between with the USA. I mean, they have. Uh, I mean, North Korean government has asked the South Korean government to stop joint military drills with the USA. Uh, but this is also uh, the very sensitive issue. I mean, South Korean government has empathized that this is not a part of the uh, uh, the negotiation, uh, the current negotiation with North Korea. Mm. And but North Korea kept on asking that the South Korean government to discuss about this issue. So there must be some possibility to uh, discuss about. I mean, I mean, North Korea raised these two issues at the table. But uh, we have to wait and see. But. Uh, for the uh, successful outcome at this meeting, definitely 
North Korea should reframe themselves from raising such a kind of sensitive issues. Uh, but South Korean government also should prepare uh, for those kind of the very embarrassing situation at the table with North Korea. Well, that's all we have time for today. Mm -hmm. but thank you for coming in today and sharing your insights with us. And we look forward to having you again soon. My pleasure. Now that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you for staying with us. I'll be back next week with more analysis and insights on the day's top stories. Till then, hope you have a good weekend and see you next time. Goodbye.